Okay, today, 2014 Subaru Crosstrek XV, rear brake pads and rotors. Okay, they're making it easy for us here. The uh, caliper mounting bolt, 14 mil. Caliper bracket mounting bolt is also 14 mil. Get the lower one, lower one as well. With that torque. So the main symptom we're trying to fix today is these rear brakes are very grindy, uh, very grindy. And you can see this piston is pushed very far out. So there's really not much life left on these pads. So I'll just tuck this caliper up here. Should stay there pretty good for me. And uh, yeah, there really is nothing left to this pad right here. Yeah, that's pretty ugly. And then you can see The whole surface is all gouged now, which is why we're doing rotors also. We'll continue with the bracket bolts, also 14 mils, like I said. Okay, so we're gonna work on trying to get this rotor off now. So this design has the parking brake inside the hat of this rotor, okay? So this is just a traditional disc brake caliper, you know, back here. Um, just pushes out, in, nothing special. Um, your parking brake pads, though, are inside here. So you have a drum brake setup for the parking brake, disc brake for the actual brakes. Uh, this is the cable that will actuate them, okay? And I bring that up because there are some times that you can tap this and it'll come off those shoes in there. Okay, that's what I'm going to try first to see if I can just get this rotor to come right off. Other times, you're going to have to use this access hole. Right now, this is a rubber stopper, uh, like a protector. Uh, you can reach in there, though, when that's taken out, and you can twist back the adjustment on the parking brake to bring those pads in and then let you bring the, uh, the rotor off. So I'll start by just giving it some persuasion here a little bit. I like using a soft mallet for this because I don't want to ruin those pads in there. Now you see how I can pull it a little and it's springing back. That's telling me it's caught on those pads pretty good. So what I'll do now instead is I'll get this turned. I'll find out for sure, but a lot of times the adjuster is up in this quadrant this this area up here so i'll pull that out and i'll show you how to adjust it okay you get that rear boot out I'm just going to get a flat blade screwdriver around the edge oh had better luck from the inside edge okay that's all that is save that new rotors don't come on. so now hopefully we can look inside here Okay, so I had to rotate that access hole all the way to the bottom. And now we can see the adjuster in there. So it's behind that spring. Okay. Hello. Yep. It's a better look at this adjuster down here. Um, so what you're gonna do to release this side, you're gonna push this that direction. It's gonna get looser and looser and looser. And you'll be able to pull the rotor right off. Okay, if you lose track of which direction you're going, um, if it gets tighter, that's not what you want. You want to push it whatever direction makes it looser. And then when I put this rotor back on later, which uh, I won't show you that, but uh, what you're going to do is you're then going to push this, this direction, okay, to make it spin away from you, okay. And then you're going to do that, continue to do that until you can't turn this by hand anymore, okay? So you tighten it as much as you can, and then spin it. And if it spins freely, uh, then you're going to tighten it a little bit more. This, tighten this a little bit more. Keep spinning it. What you want when you're done is you want a slight drag, okay? You want to be able to move it by hand, but it should be, it should have a little resistance, 
okay? It should feel like these are slightly touching the inside of that new rotor. Um, that way you know that they're adjusted well enough so that when you pull the parking brake from inside, these will be right here, ready to grab. Okay, so this is the new rotor placed on, and this is easy to move, okay? And you hear that, that noise? That doesn't mean that they're tight, okay? That's just a little bit of, uh, uh, maybe the pads are a little shifted up or down or something, because um, they're all spring-loaded. So, bring this back down here. Now, it's kind of tough to show, again, inside there. Let's see if I can get a look at it again. Okay, so there you can see those teeth again on that sort of star-shaped uh, adjuster wheel there. So now, I'm going to pry those teeth upward over and over again until it's difficult to turn this uh, wheel by hand, this rotor by hand, and then I'll back it off a little bit to the point where I can still move it, but I can tell that there's drag. Okay, so I'll try and get a spot here where you can see exactly what I'm doing. It's a little tricky, I know. Okay. So now I've got it tight enough that I can't move it by hand. Okay, that's a little too tight. So now you want to take that and push those teeth the other way a little bit. And get up on one and then pry it down a little bit. Only go a couple teeth at a time, especially once you know you're close to the right adjustment. Because otherwise you'll overshoot it and you'll have to go back and forth a bunch of times. So... Just go a couple teeth. Okay, and now I can move it, but now it's a little bit too loose, right? So then we'll just go up another tooth, and I can move it by hand still, which is what makes me happy, okay? It's a little bit snug. You can feel a little bit of drag, but that's the right way to do it. Okay, that part... Uh, that's how you do that. Okay, next step, we got to uh, press this piston back in the caliper. Okay, there's a couple different tools for that. Uh, I like this pistol grip style tool from Lyle Tools. Um, I enjoy it. So basically, I've already removed the top of the brake fluid reservoir under the hood. And uh, you can tell how far out that piston was because this tool barely fits in there um, in its uh, smallest setting. So with this tool, you slide it in there like that. And you just use it just like a caulk gun. And that's going to press that piston right back in for you. Nice and smooth. All the way back in. Okay, now we'll work on the caliper brackets and uh, show you what that does for this part. So these are your caliper slide pins. This is what, this is what helps when the piston comes out and it forces the brake pads to squeeze the rotor. These will get compressed also, but because there's a give here, after the piston, the brake piston stops pushing, this will allow everything to release and just ride really close to the rotor, but not actually squeeze it. So it's important that these are serviced. Okay, so we're gonna pull these out, clean them off, re-lube them, stick them back in. Okay, just pulls out. One of these pins is gonna have this rubber boot on it. Okay, make sure it goes back in the correct one. So that's why I do one of these at a time usually. So I'll just wipe off the excess grease, uh, the old grease, the old dirty grease usually. Use a little brake clean to get off a little more residue. Wipe it again. Paint it with some fresh grease. And get it put back in. Now, there's these channels here. So I already pulled out the brake pads, I already pulled out the metal clips that the brake pads ride in, and now there's these channels here where those clips would be. So now I'm gonna use uh, air die grinder with a wire brush, clean that all up, do a very light coating of grease, put new clips in, another very light coating of grease, and see if we can get the pads to sit in there. Okay, 
they just make sure they're pushed all the way in. Because if they're not, it'll feel like the brake pads won't fit. Depending on the brake pads, uh, sometimes you're going to have to trim these little ears a little bit. <clears throat> so we'll see how this goes. On this car, this is a feeler. That's a warning uh, chirp, basically, device. That when the brake pads get low enough, that's going to squeak at you before they're actually totally gone. Uh, <laughs> uh, owner of this car didn't listen to them. Uh, they said that they thought they heard a cicada chirping, an insect cicada uh, chirping in the back, and they didn't know what it was. And then eventually the brakes started grinding. So now we know. Uh, so I told them to listen to the cicada next time, uh, and they wouldn't destroy their rotors. So we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> okay, so these are actually going to fit good. Um, they make contact. The sides of those ears make contact with everything, but you don't have to force it. Uh, you can still move it gently by hand. Right, you can still move the pad gently by hand. That's what you're looking for, because um, sometimes these brake pads, depending on the car and everything, uh, have been stamped poorly, so they're actually too big, and you can wedge them in there and they'll sit in there, but then they won't have any flex or any movement when you press the brakes. They'll just get wedged in tighter and tighter and then burn up your brake pads. So that's why I go through all the time with cleaning up the bracket, a little grease behind this, a little grease between the pad and this, and make sure that they can actually physically move. So. Um, and I'm probably going to take these pads back out of here. I'll put them on uh, when the bracket's on the car, because that's the easiest way to do it once the bracket's put back on. You want to be careful with the grease. If you get it on your hands, try not to touch the surface of these pads, because you don't want that. It's going to do nothing for your ability to slow down, that's for sure. So now this one's a lot harder to move. So I am going to trim these ears a little bit on that pad. Spray off any grease that made its way onto the rotor. Can't have that. Spray this back just to be precautionary here. Make sure it's good. Like I said, the pad with the warning feeler is going on the back. So I'll give it a little touch of grease on the ears and set it in there. Front pad, same way, or outer pad, really, same way. A little grease just on the ears. Get it in there. And I like to use something like this on the back of the pads. It's supposed to help with uh, brake noise, your chatter, your squeaks that you might get uh, that you're not supposed to get. Don't need a lot of that, just a little bit. Now we're ready to uh, put this caliper back on. You may have to press these in just a little, these, uh, these pins, okay? In order to get that to go back on properly. But uh, now all you gotta do is just install those bolts uh, and the job is done. Uh, put the wheel back on. Don't forget to torque your lug nuts properly, and then you can go to the other side. There you go. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps.